Ready? All right, so I grew up in Yokohama, which is right next to Tokyo. And as a kid, the only thing I did outside of school was swimming. And there are two benefits of taking swimming lessons as a kid. One is that, of course, you're going to get healthier, right? And the other is that when you're in the water, you can cry, and nobody will see you. On the day after my elementary school graduation, my family had to move to the United States because of my father's job. And a few weeks before that, I had my last practice. And while swimming backstroke, I was crying. I didn't want to leave. Getting out from your comfort zone is always hard. And as many of you know, Japan will need to get out from its comfort zones in order to survive in the 21st century. And one comfort zone I want to point out today is technology innovation. As you'll see today, Japan is pretty good at technology innovation. And it's about pushing the limits of technology. But I think the future of innovation is not pushing the limits of technology. And I think the future is in user experience. The future began um, 40 days ago when Instagram was bought by Facebook for $1 billion. Instagram, right, it's just a photo sharing app on iPhone and Android, but it was still an innovation. One of the tweets on Twitter that I tweeted and got retweeted by more than 4,000 people said that innovation is about making something ordinary in the future. And in just 1.5 years, Instagram changed the way 40 million people use uh, photo sharing apps and take photos. And this was faster than the rate of Facebook's growth. So I think that Instagram is going to be the ordinary way for people to share photos in the future. And this happened so quickly because Instagram did not invent new technology. But instead, it perfected the user experience of sharing photos. Right. Um, and um, the sorry, one second. And there's nothing that slows down technology innovation. Uh, sorry, there's nothing that slows down user experience innovation. Even though technology innovation can be slowed down if the underlying technology is slow like medicine. So that's why Instagram was able to pull it off in 1.5 years. And I think this is the future of innovation. And I saw this coming. So last year, I made a switch from um, being a technology innovator to a user experience innovator. I had a degree from, in computer science from Carnegie Mellon. And I had three engineering jobs. And, but I decided to switch to take a designer position at a startup in Silicon Valley called Quora. And it was hard. It was actually the biggest comfort zone that I have to get out of. It took me almost six months before I learned enough user experience to be able to release a future of my own. And every day until that point, I was like crying. But I realized that a lot of the technology innovators will have to go through the same pain because user experience innovation is the future, and some of the technology innovators will have to learn user experience. And so today I figured that I want to um, share what I wish I knew when I made a switch from technology to user experience. And there are three things. Um, first is that. You don't need to be talented in design to understand user experience. There are three things that make up user experience. One is appearance. Two is behavior. And three is context. Appearance is how it looks. Behavior is how it works. And three, context is if it's appropriate. And let me explain this uh, one by one. So let's say I went on a date with a girl, and I made three mistakes, right? 
One mistake I made was that, let's say I didn't do my hair, so my appearance was bad. And let's say I came five minutes late, so my behavior was bad, right? <laughs> but lastly, for the dinner, I took that girl to Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Which one's the worst, right? KFC is definitely not the right place to go for the context of going on a date. So for dating, context is more important than appearance and behavior. And this is true for user experience as well. So let's say I was making an iPhone app and made three mistakes again. Let's say the iPhone app had a photo uploading feature. And let's say I made the photo uploading button too small so the appearance was bad. Or maybe the photo uploading button takes five minutes to actually upload photos, so the behavior was bad. And finally, what if this app was an alarm clock, right? Who wants to take a photo of yourself when you wake up, right? Photo uploading feature is definitely not the right um, thing to do for alarm clock and doesn't fit the context. And I think there are too many apps that try to add features that don't fit the context of the app itself. So for, you, for user experience, context is more important than appearance and behavior. And for appearance and behavior, you have to have some design talent to make it look good or make it work well. But for context, you don't need design talent. All you need to know is common sense. And that's why you don't need design talent to work on user experience. The second advice I'm going to give is that user experience follows logical steps. Um, let me tell you how Instagram innovated in user experience. So how many of you have actually used Instagram? Uh, it's like half the people, right? So um, if you use Instagram, you see that the photos on Instagram are all square shaped, right? Does anyone know why? So when Instagram started, the founders thought that they're going to have to make you know, people be able to consume lots of photos, because once people start using Instagram, there are going to be lots of photos that's uploaded. So they built the thing called Newsfeed, where you can scroll through photos up and down with its the full size. And when you, use the, when you have the Newsfeed and you can scroll photos up and down, the photos better fit to the width of the phone. So the portrait photos will fit the width of the iPhone, but if it's a landscape photo, it's going to have to shrink to fit the width of the phone, right? So that's why landscape photos will not look good. On the other hand, portrait photos will take up the entire screen. So that means you're gonna, if you're going to put the, you know, who uploaded the photo or who liked the photos, then they're going to cover up the photo, so they won't look good either. So that's why they use square photos. User experience follows logical steps. And finally, you can steal techniques from other apps in user experience. So before Instagram, there are companies that try to use square photos on newsfeed. And that was Twitter. And Facebook actually copied Twitter, but Facebook as well. So uh, when on Twitter and Facebook, when you look at the timeline or the newsfeed, the photos are all squares. So um, when you look at the newsfeed, then they're going to um, look consistent because if the photos keep changing size or dimensions, then the newsfeed is going to be hard to parse. So um, in summary, user experience is going to be the future of innovation. And the three things I want you to know before that is that user experience doesn't require design talent, it's no logical steps, and finally, steal techniques from other apps. Um, I'm running out of time, but let me give one more story before I go. Um, so last year, I gave this kind of lecture um, at Keio University. And the night before the lecture, my family all stayed at our house in Yokohama, where I grew, where I grew up. And um, at that time, my parents were living in Nagoya. My brother was a student at UC Berkeley, and I was working in Silicon Valley. And, um, before that, we all lived in the east coast of the United States. 
And then before I went to bed, I realized that we hadn't slept at our house in Yokohama, where I grew up, for 11 years until that point. And I just want to tell you guys that before we talk about innovations in 10 years, or before you tell kids to get out of the United States, sorry, get out of Japan and you know, learn about innovation, get out of your comfort zone, I want you to know that getting out from your comfort zone is hard. And it might take more than 11 years before you realize how much it costs. So thank you, and um, enjoy today. So yeah. <laughs>